Our gracious God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that once again you have gathered us together here. And Lord, we would ask and come with a desire that we might hear you speaking to us from your most holy word, the Holy Scriptures. Therefore, we lift our hearts unto you in thanksgiving in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and ask these things for the praise of your glory. Amen. 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 Now then, we turn to that first chapter of Luke. And um, one thing that I can say is this, that um, when I was listening to the reading this morning in the Old Testament, I was uh, drawn to the fact, because we are looking into Luke and uh, dwelling on the part now of the first chapter, I was looking to the part of, uh, to, to thinking of the long these lines, because this has been the framework in my mind of the order. Joshua, before that, coming up in the car, we spoke about, at least mention was made about the word of uh, a prophecy, the word of the whole Bible, of, of something prophetic being speaking, spoken, and then, of course, it being fulfilled. And we remember that there was a, a significant a prophetic act of bringing out the kings, putting their foot on their necks, putting them back into the cave, and then that what that was a picture of, we read that immediately they were off on their way to do in order what they had to do and then come back to that place again. Now that spoke to my mind because as I've been looking into Luke's Gospel for a while now, I've had to have a complete change of mindset about the view, the way that I have a view of looking into Luke's Gospel and having regard for it and coming to see in the first instance it was written to one person only. One person only. And that sets the Gospel of Luke aside in its particular peculiar way. I use that word peculiar in as much as there were a company of people that were known of the peculiar people because they realized that the Lord had chosen them and picked them out and gathered together as someone gathers a box of jewels together. That's why they had that name. Whether it was taken upon themselves to use it, or whether it was spoken of by those who were listening to them and affected by their message. They were given that that name had come upon them. And whilst they existed, we don't know in this country of anyone who who a uh, church grouping set up who have that name today, um, but as long as they were, that was the place. And now, how do we know about it today? How do I know about it today? Because you go along to a building, and then you read in the headstone, or, or the stone that's up there, on, somewhere on the face of the building, about them being a peculiar people. And um, I say that now because, you see, it was written, first of all, and acts, incidentally, with the, in the same way, with the same manner, with the same ministry, to one person only, 
and that was Theophilus. Of course, there's a, uh, an application to it, to us, as there is of every, of, of every part of the whole scripture, from the first verse in Genesis to the last verse in Revelation. There is an application out of its message to us, but in its primary sense and detail, that was the word that, or I can say, looking at this scripture, this is the word that, wrote, that Luke was recorded. And in the first four verses, there are two words that stand out particularly and stand out. Um, they may not be, they're not translated as that in the King James Version, but that's the word accurately and, and uh, accurately and uh, um, reliably. They're accurate and reliable. Accurate. The word here in the King James Version is diligent. It speaks about the way that Luke went about diligently. And uh, that word is, 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 is in the meaning of the word. And in the meaning of the word is this word accurate. And then because of that, it is reliable pains to bring a word to um, Theophilus that was going to assure him that what he had already been taught was the right message, the right words from God, because whoever taught him was absolutely faithful. The word is that they, he catechized them. And all the things that were spoken to him, Luke seeks to have confirmation from whoever might confirm the things to him, from whatever source, whether written or oral, that's the way he went about this particular ministry to Theophilus. And beloved, we know, we know. I thank God that those who brought to me the message of the gospel went about it with the same care and concern. Care and concern for me as a sinner that was lost before I came to know the Lord Jesus cared for me in pastoral ministry the building up to see that whatever was set was green, fresh pasture so that one could be established, so that one could go on knowing indeed that whatever foundation was laid, it could be built upon. And I think of my dear brother here, and Brother Peter, and the burden, I think of many who we would associate with and be at one with in heart and mind and spirit. And I think of those that have come here and will continue to come here to minister the word, one sole purpose, to be absolutely faithful to God and to be faithful to all to whom 
they minister. And so we come. And you see, um, if I could also say this, recently I happened to listen twice to a recording of Lloyd-Jones teaching in Romans, and he's teaching there particularly about the, 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 the promised son who should come, Isaac. And he deals with a passage, I suppose in one sense, it's relevant to this this morning, and um, God willing, this evening I hope to come on to the uh, leading on from where we left off this morning to think of the conception of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, his coming into the world. And um, um, it's, it's relevant in that sense there because it speaks of the promised one. A dealing in Romans 9, somewhere at, uh, in, in Romans 9, and, and uh, if you were care to look it up on um, uh, MLJ. Uh, mljtrust.org, it comes in this, the, 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 the promised. It's about the promised son or the promised seed as it were, as it is, as it was in Isaac. And it's there. And, and one can't have, I, I sent it to someone because I knew that it would be good for him to hear it. And he was, if I say impressed, the thing that spoke to him was the meticulous detail in that, I suppose it was a Friday evening of exposition, the meticulous detail, pair and order of setting out what Dr. Lloyd-Jones was teaching on that particular Friday evening. And beloved, I, I, we know this about his ministry. It's truly prophetic because in our day and generation, it speaks volumes of what we need to hear in this present day and generation. Now then, I must get down to the text. I want to come to the birth of John the Baptist. And Luke, in all the material that he has before him, setting it out, seeing and able to do because of that an analytical study of it, and then, as it were, reverse the analysis and put it all together as a compact volume. And in all that was there, he saw the absolute necessity. He was led of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was leading him. The Lord, the Holy Spirit was bear, bearing him, carrying him along. He he then puts it back in this, um, you know, there's the analysis to open it up and loosen it up, but it was all there. It was all loose before him. And he caused it to be compacted together. I suppose we now do the opposite. Take from the compacted volume by analysis, open it up piece by piece, little by little. And in putting it down, he chooses this event as the first piece. He's led to see it as the necessary piece. He's led to see it as the necessary thing. Prerequisite to the conception and birth of our Lord Jesus Christ deals with the one 
who was the forerunner, who brought the prerequisite message of introduction with the attitude that I must decrease, that he might increase. And that was where Luke begins. And if I were to take a text, I would have to take the words, and I must take a text, the words of Gabriel, fear not, Zechariah, thy prayer is heard, it says here. Thy prayer is heard. Now then, Zechariah is there. It's a once a lifetime opportunity. Some commentators would say at the present time then, at that present time, <coughs> at that present time, there were about 20,000 priests in the line of all the courses that David ordered and set down for ministry. About 20,000 of them. All right. That's a commentator, um, having done his research. And um, whatever was the facts and figures that he, and wherever he got them from, that was the estimate. And um, to explain why it was that Zachariah was chosen by lot. <coughs> whatever is the whatever is the precise accurate number it was a once in the lifetime occasion and when your name came up by lot in whichever way it was chosen you were there to minister you wouldn't, however much I should imagine, you wouldn't want to come up and minister again because there's so many waiting. And he was chosen by lot to be there on a particular day. It's dated. It's dated in the course of Abijah. And it would be in a certain time of a certain year. And in the order of his lot, in having been chosen by lot, having been chosen to be there, he was there. And the lot also fell on or what one person would have been described to me as a, a, a very, or what, what he would use the word plum. Oh, it was a, it was a, um, it was a plum appointment for him. It was looked upon as one of the greatest things to go in and to um, put the incense on the burning coals at a particular time. And we are told that all the multitude without were praying. And at that particular time, the incense was put upon the altar of incense and the smoke, the, I'll use the word fumes, the, 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 the arising was a picture of that which arose. On this day, there appeared unto him an angel, the angel of the Lord, who announced himself 
as Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. And he is standing on the right side. We take it that if the altar is facing east, he's standing on the south side. And he appears unto Zechariah. And Zechariah is troubled at his appearance before him. I'm not going to speculate why he might have been troubled. Sufficient to say he was absolutely troubled. He was gripped. He was held, being troubled. And I'm sure of this, it would have affected him physically as well, the whole of his being. The effects of it would have been there, certainly on his soul and spirit. Troubled. Troubled. And then, there fell on upon him fear. They fell on fear. And I've noticed in looking at this part of the text, by the way, oh, there's, there's always double prepositions, either compounded or even on their own. They fell on, upon him fear. It was there. Then it was fear. His reaction to the trouble. He was troubled. Then his reaction was fear. And in a moment, a word was spoken. Fear not. We read, thy prayer is heard. When you read it, what Gabriel said, thy prayer was heard. It wasn't a prayer linked to any prayer of his that day. It wasn't a prayer linked to anything that was going upon outside. In that sense, I'm talking about the prayer now. Of course, it was prayer linked to that. What was going on that very day in the outer place and in the place where he was according to his lot and ministry. But thy prayer was heard. And this pushes the prayer right back to the day it was prayed. And Gabriel assures him that it was heard. He, Gabriel came to convey words that were given to him to bring. It was a word personally from God himself to Zechariah. Thy prayer, he says, reporting it, thy prayer was heard. And then he goes on to reveal the answer. I'm in a quandary for a moment. Was he praying according to the whole hope of every family in Israel that they might be a bearer of the Messiah? Was he praying with particular insight that he might be the bearer of the forerunner. One doesn't know. What one does know is this, that whatever he prayed arose. And whatever he prayed was linked to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. According to God's eternal purpose, 
which he purposed in Christ Jesus. Think. And beloved, this is our encouragement that whatever we are praying, whoever we are praying for, whatever we are praying for, whatever is our ministry, what is it? It's linked to God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus for us, yes, personally, for everyone to whom we speak that the purposes might be worked out. That's our encouragement. That the purposes might be worked out. Oh, beloved, this is an encouragement and a strengthening and something I pray that is of the Holy Spirit that will be feeding the impetus whether it's a first inertia, inertia, or any other time of the moving of God's energy that's in himself to speed us on in our ministry. Perhaps that might be the sole point this morning of whatever is the purpose of this ministry, to encourage us, beloved, to speed on. And that doesn't necessarily mean whizzing along. To plod on. To be steady, uncertain in the going on. Oh, beloved, this is what Luke would have wanted with everything else that Onesim, that, 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 that um, Theophilus might go on, plodding on steadily when there was time for him to move quickly, if he should be sent to another assignment for he was nevertheless the most excellent Theophilus, a, a title of some ambassage or whatever, at least that's the way the word is used today, of an ambassador, his excellency, the ambassador. Luke was wanting him to be encouraged to plod on steadily, knowing that whatever he did, that his work was not empty of purpose. Indeed, it was full of purpose as he lived and moved in the will of God according to the movings and workings of the Spirit of God, of God himself, moving at his own pace. Beloved, isn't it a wonder isn't it a wonder that God should do so by his grace, giving us grace? I don't want to speak with presumption, but God has given us grace. This whole exercise for us has become known as a means of grace. There are some people who have emphasized this more than anything else, as it were, to the extent that even baptism and the Lord's Supper, they say, is, is to this 
they you know it's, it's, they speak of it as a means of grace, but uh, but 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 the thing that is essential, the thing that is essential in order to make that a means of grace is the the the, 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 the solidness, the feeling of the word, the word of God, the message of and from the Holy Scriptures to build us up. And I didn't, as I said, I would be presumptuous, but beloved, the Lord is moving amongst us this morning. Graciously, in a gracious way, to give to us grace. Oh, I noticed this morning that we didn't say the grace at the uh, time that was there that I might have been expecting. But oh, beloved, there is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ upon us. Oh, there's ample evidence of the love of God. And there's certainly evidence of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. I'm going like this because, uh, you know, uh, it can't be touched, it can't be felt in that sense. But beloved, in the Spirit, we know, we know, we know, we know that it is so. It is so. It is so. It is so. Do you know, I'm just about wondering whether that is <laughs> the place where I ought to be stopping today. I just wonder. Perhaps it is essential that I should stop there, right? I tell you what I did want to sort of just consider. I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. I don't know whether I'm defeating my purpose here. I would say something because it does come out in, in, in the whole thing of what I've spoken or tried to speak of, of the, the, the four verses of introduction and this very first event. You know, he's got to stand to attention. If you're standing at ease, you've got to come to attention to do anything. He's certainly attentive when he's there in the presence of God. And he's standing to attention to be off straight away as soon as he knows. It's the time for him to move as soon as God speaks to him. He's off. I move. Now then, if I go down there this morning, I've, oh, I trust I haven't spoiled it. You know that? I've got to be content this morning to commit it to the Lord. Even if I did go on after that particular point to say, oh, to say no more. Amen. Psalm 121, I to the hills will lift mine eyes, from whence does come mine aid. My safety cometh from the Lord, who heaven and earth hath made. We look unto the hills, 
We'll come to the Lord and we trust his presence with us as our brother's been saying and let's stand to sing together. I to the hills of Psalm 121 in the metrical version. <clears throat> I to the hills will lift mine eyes from whence doth come my aid my safety comes from the Lord who am and and glorious God we thank thee how uh, Zechariah waited upon thee and in prayer thou did hear his prayer Lord we thank thee thou to hear our prayers we pray we may court pray according to thy will we pray Lord thou would fulfill in us the things that thou hast purposed and in Christ, our great and glorious Saviour. We thank thee, Lord, we are found in him. This Lord's day, we're found together in thy house, together to worship the living God, together to rejoice in so great a salvation that came by our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord, that thou, thou will keep thy people in perfect peace, whose Mind is stayed on thee. O oh Lord, keep our hearts set upon our Lord Jesus, our wonderful Saviour, our good promises that we can be cleansed of all our sin as we repent again and turn to thee again and we find that stillness assured to us that thou art with us, that thou dost love us and that thou will never leave us nor forsake us. So we pray, Lord, the blessing on the rest of this Lord's day, and now that thou would bless thy people, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you all now, evermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.